In this presentation, we will create, analyze, print, and export to Excel a comparative profit and loss within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, you select the view drop down up top and select the open windows list. We're going to create a comparative profit and loss. In order to do that, we'll start off with the standard profit and loss report. We'll get there by going to reports drop down up top, company and financial, and the profit and loss standard report. We're going to have a comparison for January and February of the year that we are working in 2019. A couple ways we can think about how to enter this data. We're going to do so here by going to the customized reports up top. So we're going to go to customized reports. We're going to change the date range and think about how we might want to have a comparison. In other words, how can we compare and have two low lines, January and February, which we can have a comparison between the two. Let's start thinking about this by adding the full date range, which would be 010119 to 022819. So January 1st, 2019 to February 28th, 2019. What we're looking for is a January and February comparison. So if we were to do that only and say, okay, we'll see that it, it doesn't do what we would want because it only gives the, the data for that time period. And remember that the profit and loss or income statement is showing performance over a time period. So in this case, it's showing performance over a two month time period, how much revenue and expenses we incurred over a two month time period. So that's, that's not going to work that way to give us a comparison of January to February. What we could do from there, however, is to go to this uh, total columns here and go to, I want to see it by month. And that'll break out the month. So now we got January and February, and then it gives the total of the two months, summing up the two months. And that's one way we can see this. Note what we see here is January 1st is going from oldest to newest, reading from left to right as time passed, rather than having the current month first. That's one option we can have. I'm going to select this drop down and go back to the total up here. This drop down that we see here is also in the customized window, as we'll see. We'll take a look at another option now for that comparison, because what we would want to do also is to show the difference. I don't want to see the total column. I want to see January, February, the difference between the two and compare the two in that fashion. How have they changed? I want to see the change column, the difference column. So let's go back to the customizer. We want to see that. That's what we want to see. So we're going to go to the customize report up top and we're going to go see. Here's the same drop down. This is the same drop down, which we could change it to month right there. We can use the previous item here. In order to do that, though, we need to make sure that we're only selecting one month. So we can't have a two month time period to show the previous period. So what we want to do is say, let's make this 020119 or February 1st, 2019, not 2009, 2019, February 1st, 2019 to February 28th, 2019, the period we are working on. That is now one month worth of time. And if we click this item, then show the previous period, then we should just get one thing, the previous period. So we're going to say, okay, and now it, it gives us what we would expect. We've got January and February showing. And in this format, it's going to give the current month first, reading from left to right, the latest month first, and then the prior months. This might be useful or is common because we would assume that the current month is the one we're most interested in. It's the current month. And the last month is less interesting to us. So it's not in order of chronological order when things happen, but in order of significance most likely the the current month being what we're most concerned about so then we're going to go back up top and go to customize reports what we would like to see now is a difference column and so we're going to say customize reports and we want to see the dollar change dollar change okay and now of course we just have the difference here so the february current month minus january prior month february is greater by 32 dollars and 60 cents and it's going to do that all the way down. So this difference column will be the change column, the difference column in dollars. That, of course, is going to be very useful to us because we can think about how we did this year compared to, or this month compared to last month. 
And if we see, for example, any expenses that are standing out, then we can look into those expenses. Now, our data here, uh, January was the first month of operations. So they may not be too similar yet until we start to standardize our operations and still, until things start to smooth out. And then you would expect that uh, a month to month, like some expenses at least would be much the same. And then we can see these trends. If there's any major trends, major differences, then we can look into them. The other difference we want to see is often going to be percentage differences. And percentage differences are things that most people have a hard time uh, conceptualizing at first. Why would we want to use a percentage? Why don't I just use the number difference and, and not the percentage difference? But uh, the percentage change can really give us an idea when we're talking about different size numbers that happen. It really help us too when we're comparing other types of organizations. If we're comparing our organization to other types of organizations, then percentages are really helpful. They're really a good measurement for a lot of different areas. So let's take a look at a percentage change. We'll go to the custom reports up top. And now we're going to select the second item, which is a percent change. So percent change and OK. And so now we have the percent change. So let's first just think about what that means. What does it mean to be a percentage change? Uh, if we take this merchandise sales, we're going to say, okay, 2500 minus 2467.4 means there's a $32.66 change. Uh, now, if we take that change and divide by the prior year, the, the January in this case, divided by 2467.4, if we move the decibel over two places, it's 1.32, 1.3 percentage change. So there was a percent, 1.3 percent increase in the prior amount. That's going to be useful when we talk to other people, and especially when we benchmark with other kind of companies, and we look at our percentage change as as it goes up or as it goes up over time. Because if we compare to someone else that's a similar company, another company that sells guitars that's similar to us but possibly they're bigger than us, possibly their sales are higher than us, then we, their dollar change, how much their sales went up by dollars, isn't going to help us. We can't really use that as a benchmark to see if we are growing at a similar rate. However, if their percentage change is comparable to ours, if ours is comparable to theirs, then we can say, hey, at least we're growing as the market's growing. We can compare ourselves to the industry. So when we take our percentage change and look at and benchmark to the industry, we almost have to use percentages. We can't use dollar amounts unless we're comparing to companies that are both in our industry and uh, have the same revenue earnings comparable to us, which probably isn't the case. We want to benchmark to people that are better than us oftentimes, and they probably have larger revenue amounts. And we could still use them as a benchmark by just using ratios and trying to figure out how, how much are they growing by in terms of revenue. And so that's one measure that we're going to have. So this will be the, the common profit and loss. Now we probably want to change the name to something like a comparative profit and loss. And now we've also got the date here, which is just says February. Now we got January and February. So let's change those items and let's remove the date and time and let's put maybe our name on the, on the footers and all that kind of good stuff. So we're going to go to the customize reports once again, and then we'll go to the header and footer. And we're going to go ahead and change the profit and profit and loss to a comparative profit and loss. So I just typed in comparative, and then we want to change the subtitle to January and February. So we got January and February 2019. I'm going to remove the date prepared, the time prepared and the report basis. We'll put in the footer column, we'll put our name or something in the footer column just to have that standardized. And uh, then we'll go to the fonts and numbers. And let's do our, our um, putting parentheses around the negative numbers and even making them red. And then we will also remove the pennies, remove the cents. The report still makes sense, but it has no sense in terms of pennies. So we're going to say OK. And there's going to be our information. So here is our report. If we wanted to look at this in terms of the footer to see if the footer is there, we'd have to go to the print item here, reports, check out the preview, and this will give a preview of the printing. Here's the footer. We'll zoom in on the footer, and there's Smith on the footer. So that looks good. It looks like it has done what we would expect it to do. I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to close out of this. 
And then what we probably want to do is memorize this report. So we're going to go to memorize the reports. And we're going to call it, it's, it's named pro appropriately, customized, uh, custom, comparative profit and loss. That looks good. We're going to save it in memorize report group, the one we set up with our name in it. And we may want to go through this and, and possibly customize by the type of report, the income statement or profit and loss versus the balance sheet or some other method. And it will differ depending on if we're the only user or if we have other users. If we're the only user, then we may want to have some other categories than just our name. We may want to subcategorize it and customize further. If we're multiple users, then maybe our name is good so we can distinguish our reports that we prefer to others. So I'm going to select here and say OK. It'll take a little photograph of it, which is nice. You probably couldn't hear it there, but if you, if you have the sound on, it'll take a little picture of it. And you'll hear it and so then we're going to go to if you wanted to print that report then we would go to reports drop down and we would go to memorize reports and here's the smith reports now we have a few of them in here here's the comparative profit and loss that we have just created now we're going to go ahead and export this report to excel and we'll talk about printing options saving options and uh, different ways that we can display this data and so we're going to go to Excel. We're going to create a new worksheet. We're going to put that into an existing workbook. We're going to browse to place that workbook. I'm going to go a little bit faster because we've seen this a few times, but I think it's important to just keep on thinking about how we're going to save the data. So we'll put it into Get Great Guitars, Reports, Section 3. And we're going to open up this file that's already, op that's already been created. So we're just going to double click on it. It will open that file. And once we said, I'll select export, and then it will open that file. It'll create a new tab. It'll put this information in the new tab. Here we have it. It's kind of in the middle here. So I'm going to drag it to the right. I'm going to left click on it and drag it to the right. I'm going to double click on it and change the name. Call it something like a comparative uh, P and L. And then we'll unsplit the panes by going to the View tab, going to the Windows group, and selecting the split, which will unsplit. Then I'd like to go to the page layout and see what it will look at like over here. So here's the page layout. It's got the headers there, so it looks proper. It looks like it fits on a page, so that is all good. So we're going to go back to the normal view, back to the normal view. Here's what we have. I'm going to delete this added information that was included by clicking on it. Right-click and delete and say delete that so now we have three reports we could give someone this document in order to provide this information all in one document if they don't like excel but we want to give it in one document still we can go to the file tab up top we can print and we can print to the entire workbook as long as we have the cute pdf printer it'll save it as a pdf and we can have all the documents on one pdf file which could be useful when displaying this information, giving this information to others. We're going to close this back out now, save that. And of course, the other main way that we can save this is by PDF. So we can go and save as a PDF by selecting the print option, either choosing save as PDF or go to that reports once again, which I typically will do and then print as the PDF using the PDF writer, printing that item. It'll then ask us to save it, and we're going to save it to that location. Looks like it's the one we want. I'm going to call it a comparative profit and loss, or some abbreviation of that, comparative P and L. And again, note what we have so far, three documents. If we keep doing this, then if we're giving this to somebody, we got to decide how we're going to do it. Are we going to zip the file? Are we going to add three files? Are we going to try to put it all in the one PDF? Can we give someone the Excel file? Just a few options to consider depending on who you are giving this information to. We'll save that. And there's that. There is the comparative profit and loss. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.